a matchup for the UFC Bantamweight division title. The Olympic gold medalist, UFC flyweight champion, and again, you talk about work ethic. That conversation begins with the messenger. It absolutely does. As a young boy, Henry understood that he wanted gold bigger than any high school kid should chase. So he moved to the Olympic Training Center, and he trained with me as I was getting ready for the Olympic team prior as a little kid because he knew winning an NCAA title wasn't enough for him. Ultimately, he became Olympic champion, the youngest in U.S. history, and now he's the UFC champion. What a career by Henry Cejudo. So here he is, the consensus number one Bantamweight in the world, the UFC's reigning, defending, undisputed UFC Bantamweight champion, and he's looking to make the walk out of the octagon with all of those same titles. He wants to be mentioned with some of this division's greats, all-time types. Got to win this fight tonight, make good on another title defense, and then his name creeps into that conversation. Tape for this Bantamweight Championship fight. Jan is 27, Cejudo is 33. Jan will have a three-inch reach advantage. We set it inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. When the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Mergliata. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the sold out arena in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Bantamweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Greco-Roman wrestler, holding a professional record of 16 wins, two losses. He stands five feet four inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, presenting the challenger, Henry the Messenger Zahu. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 15 wins, one loss. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Presenting, reigning, defending, undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Pepper. All right, this is for the UFC Championship. I want you to obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. I want a nice, clean, safe fight. Touch gloves, go back to your corners, come out fighting. So the fight is now underway on one side. You have a fighter who does everything well, taking on a true grappler on the other side. Going to be interesting to see how long he can keep it upright. I mean, Damian Maya may be the most specialist type of grappler in the U.S. This guy resembles him in a number of ways. Let's see how he manages this fight against a guy that can do just about everything inside the octagon. Beautiful punch. Yeah, he's mixing it all up. Looking to land the right hand, he misses. Oh, timely hook. Well 
Well, he goes to the uppercut, but it's not there. It got defended, but it will give Henry the idea that takedown may be coming. Nice one-two there. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. He needs to try to get to a half guard at least. At minimum, try to go to half guard. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Cejudo. He continues to evolve as a striker. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head, like, through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC. And you're seeing why. Oh, you got to watch him attack his submissions. He throws the legs up to try to get a triangle choke here. Watch triangle, watch triangle. to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now, oh, oh, man, that was slick. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for bottom. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The process of the opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Well, the ground and pound has been on point tonight. Good work here by Cejudo. Connects with the right hand. Pretty good punch, that one. Nice right punch by this young man. Horn sounds for the end of round one. All right, well, the crowd enjoyed those five minutes. DC, take us through some of the highlights from that previous one. Face punching at its best. Ha. He loaded it up, he threw it straight, threw it long, and over and over, that punch found the target. It allowed him to really dictate the pace of that round. Round two underway. Some fighters shy away from checking a leg kick. Check that one. Well, he's been pretty accurate tonight. He's landed some significant strikes, but his corner's looking for him to mix it up a little bit more and just throw more volume. Because they don't see too much of a threat. This guy has to have confidence in knowing that when he extends his combinations, he's still safe, but he's also going to be able to land. He's got to be finding that confidence in his mind that all the reps in the training room are going to pay off. All right, we call on the fight stats here. These numbers are unofficial, but they are strong. 51 total strikes have landed for Henry Cejudo. And pretty efficient thus far, landing 73% of attempts against Piotr Young. Nice defense on the single leg takedown. You can tell he's worked on that. Single collar tie now. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one? All right, so once again, the fighters engage in the clinch. We'll see who will have the upper hand here, champ. There are so many options to dictate and control this exact position. Who is gonna take advantage of it? Well, he's really starting to land a high number of strikes here in this second round. No denying that he has taken the message from his corner and picked up the pace here in round two. Punch over the top. Good combination of strikes there. If your opponent has you in the clinch, pulling down on your head, landing punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar tie, reach back inside, and try to find space. And now they are throwing both sides with conviction. Oh, landing a punch with the left hand now, so certainly putting it all together on the feet tonight. He's doing a lot of work with his offhand.
big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Right, he engages in the single collar tie. And they separate. Right hand punch from the clinch. Now he's got the Muay Thai club. Hardy right, closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Right hand punch from the clinch. Muay Thai plump. And that left hook landed on the button. Another one. Yep. Oh, and the left hand. Cejudo gets hit by that leg kick. You may want to start checking some of these. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Left hand punch from the clinch. Stuffs the takedown, no problem. 10 minutes in the books. level striking action in that last round. Daniel, take us through it, if you will. Tit for tat. Who has the best chin? It seemed as though they were looking for that answer. Both guys took risk. What a fantastic round. You ready? You ready? Now All right, go. here we go with this third round of this championship fight. danger in that too because when you start reaching on to catch that kick here comes the high kick and oh in a lot of what is oh look at the turtle in that kick punches in bunches and he has a Kick is there for Cejudo. Oh, stuffs the takedown without issue. Ooh, what a punch. Back and forth we go. Oh! Real sneaky head kick gets in there. Takedown defense holds up. Nice one, two there. Well, more often than not, when he has struck, he has landed 86 total strikes unofficially have landed for Piotr Jan. And landing half the shots tonight, 50% the accuracy rate against Henry Cejudo. And a nice job at least staying upright on that. Oh, he's really starting to apply pressure on his opponent here. Different approach here in the last couple rounds. And it's the exact sense of urgency that you want to see from a fighter take the judges out of it. Cejudo gets caught with that punch. And he oh. comes through with a big knee. Knee to the body. Now he engages in a move. Well, he's up. But he is hurting for certain the finish could come at any time. Oh, big left hook there. Oh, combination lands, and it seemed like almost every strike found the target there. He's so accurate when he decides to attack. It is a sight to behold. Ooh, big shot lands. Oh, huge block. And they separate. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. Final seconds of round three. Next three rounds were now headed to the championship rounds. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene.
right, so here we go. You can feel the tension. Fourth round is underway. We'll see who has the upper hand. You feel it inside of the arena. The fighters feel it inside of the octagon. It's palpable. The energy is crazy because you understand that in the next 10 minutes, someone's gonna get a belt strapped around their waist. It's amazing. Nice sprawl there as he's quick level change now. He went single into a high crotch. Oh, he's taking his dude for a ride. I do that. I'm never <laughs> Continues to apply pressure here in half guard. Lance with the right hand. Man, doesn't take a lot of these kicks to produce redness. Look at the left side of his body there. Nasty. All right, he's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. Close guard. Well, you gotta stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Transition. Under three minutes now to go on the round. All right, half guard position for him here, and I can hear Dominic Cruz in the back of my head just screaming about underhooks somewhere. Yeah, somehow. he loved. I mean, but he's right, right? He's so right in terms of if you're on your back in the half guard, one thing you can't be is flat on your back, you need to be up on an elbow, right. you need to be half on the side, and you need to control the far side underhook. It is a battle for underhook when you're fighting in the half guard position on the mat. This is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the. Now the guy's got armbar. He's attacking it on him. He's gonna attack armbar here. Oh, we're getting a finish here. Now he falls back into the finishing position. He got. It. He got it, John. How about it? Gets the win by submission. Beautifully executed there on the ground. All right, so a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground. DC, talk us through the highlight. He's such a phenomenal grappler. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you. He is the best grappler, best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. So there he is, the UFC Bantamweight champion, closing the show tonight with a spectacular submission. It is going to take a special performance to dethrone this man at 135 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Bergliotta is going to stop in this contest at 3 minutes, 55 seconds of round number 4. Declaring the winner by tap out. And new undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, Henry the Messenger Tahu. So there he is, the new king of the Bantamweights. Big result here tonight as he submits the previous champion emphatically to become the new king in the Bantamweight division. The celebration is on in the corner, and that is not a celebration that's gonna be stopping anytime soon. There is a new Bantamweight champion. Congratulations.